I'd like to take you back down memory lane with me and watch this Central Park Interurban coming out of the depot, uh, Carroll Street Depot. Now, that must be a Burnaby Lake, pardon me, where the Central Park's going to follow him right out. Uh, this film was made 40 years ago, and uh, the commentary is made in 1990, 40 years later, so we're going to have to do a little bit of comparison here. That's the Burnaby Lake, just come over the viaduct uh, on Hastings Street, over the Great Northern Railway tracks. Now he's cutting into the S-curve on Hastings Street. He's coming, uh, comes up to the switch at Clark Drive, which was an electric switch. The motorman had to take it pretty careful around there because the switch threw right in front of the car. And if he was going too fast, he'd be headed up the wrong way. He's turning on to Clark Drive now. Now he's heading across Clark Drive towards Venables. Now he's coming up, Venables, just about to Commercial Drive, where it'll, Little Italy is now. A real sharp curve around that uh, onto uh, Commercial Drive. Now there's a two-car Central Park train with the Burnaby Lake behind them. The Burnaby Lake will stop here at 6th Avenue and the conductor's got to get out and throw the switch to take the crossover and then the Burnaby Lake line can start on his own right away after leaving Commercial Drive. The conductor's got to go and register in the booth and call out the number of the meat that come in on the opposing train which he passed somewhere on the city street. That's a little booth there where the conductor goes in to register. You'll notice the Central Park train going down Commercial Drive. A couple of the big Chilliwack cars are going to show up here in a second. There they go. Now we're on our way. The Burnaby Lake line is on his own little right of way now. He has to shoot back from 6th Avenue to almost 1st Avenue. There's several little street crossings here. One more short block, and we're at Victoria uh, Victoria Drive, where the tracks cross and go up the steep grade. That house you see there is still there with a brand new one built right on the right of way. Now he's climbing the hill up towards Lakeview. There was no station at Lakeview, just a platform at the top of the hill. That was a real steep grade, and we used to have a three-car train go up there in the rush hour every day, and boy, you'd, uh, you could walk faster than you could climb the hill. Now we can see the power house at Nanaimo Road there in the distance. And this is actually now the alley of First Avenue. Now we're veering across in the angle now, uh, well, he's coming up from Vancouver. They just reversed the uh, scene here. He's coming from Vancouver now up to First Avenue, or up to Nanaimo Street at First Avenue. Now, he veers over and goes down the center of First Avenue. If you drive along there today, you'll see there's grass all the way down the middle of the road, and that's where the interurban line was, right on the top of the grass. That's First Avenue, the way it was 40 years ago, about 1950-51. That's Locan Street Station. It wasn't. A, it was just a platform there. Oh, he's coming up to uh, Renfrew Street. There's the station ahead at Renfrew.
this was all single track here, and uh, half the time the stations were on the wrong side, and the motorman couldn't, he had to guess at where the door was, but he got pretty slick at it after a while. Now he's heading going down the hill, down towards Windermere Station. Quite a steep hill. You had to really keep a hold of it, or you'd go whistling right by the station. Down the bottom there, there's a flat spot where the uh, train will sit without any air on it. It's perfectly level for, you know, about a couple hundred feet. And then the next one is Cassiar Station. You see the barricade on the road. That's as far as the, the road went. And in the uh, springtime, the caterpillars would get in there, and, man, you would go sliding down there right around the curve and have to back all the way up because them greasy caterpillars and stink. Ooh, and they got on cooking on the wheel, hot wheels. We come around the bend here now, and there's Horn Payne substation. A shot coming from Vancouver to Boundary Road coming into Horn Payne Station. Just beyond Horn Payne Station is a, where we have a meet, a siding from the, the meets the fellow come from Sapperton. It's a one-end siding. You have to pull in and back out. This is the fellow from Sapperton. He holds the main line. The fellow from Vancouver heads into the siding. The little tracks on the side are just spur tracks going into the Horn Payne substation where we took the transformers in. I worked on a freight engine one day and we shoved a big heavy transformer in there. It was so heavy they had to build a spur through Dominion Bridge Company to get the transformer to us. Well, we're heading now towards Gilmore Station, just about ready to go across the Lougheed Highway. That's the Lougheed Highway and the wigwag going. In the second, you should be able to see the spur they built through Dominion Bridge. There it is. That's the one they built just to bring that big heavy transformer in, in a big depressed low bed flat. Now that's Gilmore Avenue. He goes by Gilmer and takes a big sweeping curve and parallels the Great Northern Main Line right down to Queen Station, which is Willingdon now, Willingdon Avenue. Years and years ago, it was called Queen's Avenue. That's why Queen Station is still no, was still known as Queen's. In the far distance is the old par house, the old substation of Horn Payne. That signal is the uh, smashboard uh, signal allowing the Burnaby Lake line to cross over the Great Northern. That's the automatic uh, signals there so that the, if there's a Great Northern coming, you, you have to wait for it until he clears. There, he just went across the Great Northern tracks. Across the flats now, over Still Creek to Murren Station, which was the foot of Royal Oak Avenue. There's the trestle over Still Creek. Murren Station just ahead. That's Murren, foot of... Now you'd be right along the side of the 401 freeway right here. This is Douglas Road. Now at Douglas Road, the road goes over the top uh, of the freeway. In the rush hour, we used to have two cars from here to Vancouver. They would cut one car off here at Douglas and the brakeman would stay with it the conductor and motorman would take the single car to their meet at Hill. And the fellow they met at Hill would couple on to the single car we left at uh, Douglas Road, and they'd continue on to Vancouver with the brakeman. The brakeman and the one car would stay always at Douglas Road to Vancouver. 
That's Sprott Station. It's a, one of the interchanges on the uh, 401 freeway is Sprott. Heading now towards Burnaby Lake Station, which was the old Sperling Avenue. Actually, Sperling Avenue is not cut through there anymore. There's a big uh, Burnaby Fire Station there on Sperling, just off of Douglas Road. Here he comes around the bend, heading towards Sperling Avenue and Burnaby Lake Station. Oh, he didn't stop at Burnaby Lake. He's, boy, he's really wound up. He's going to go right around there to Rayside. That's a little trestle, that little creek that he just went over is the creek that drains Deer Lake into Burnaby Lake. And there's Rayside. They used to rent, there was a horse farm here. They used to, used to rent horse riding horses and they'd take the trail along the side of the tracks and ride almost around Burnaby Lake. The next station is Vorse. Pretty lonely country out there, but that's right. The freeway is almost on top of the uh, inner urban there now. Just past Vorse. There's the meat down there. You'll see him in the shadows. That's the meat, and uh, he'll go back, he'll go to Vancouver, and that's Hill Station. We're carrying on to Sapperton. Cumberland Road is the next station. It's uh, just down the foot of Cumberland Road, uh, where uh, up the hill is the George Darby Hospital. You can't drive down there anymore. But at one time, you could drive right down to Cumberland Road Station. And he runs around through the bushes there, around a couple of curves. And we'll get to Stormont Curve here pretty quick. It was quite a little sharp grade, sharp turn, and a fairly good little grade around there. You had to get a hold of it coming around there. You had to dump half your passengers. There's Stormont Curve coming up. Just around the curve is uh, Stormont Station. And whistle board on the uh, white sign on the post there with the S X on it. That S is for station and X is for crossing. So you're supposed to blow the whistle when you see that. Now we're not far out of Sappert in the end of the line now. We gotta go over Caribou Road at Caribou Road Station. You can hardly find the right of way through here now. It's all growing up. There's Caribou Road Station. That board with the right angle sign on it is a stop board. That the, it's facing the motorman though. He has to stop because there's a BC Electric bus line comes down there. The Lockdale bus comes down Caribou Road Hill from Westminster Depot to Boundary and Hastings they went. Now he winds around, around the side of the hill, which uh, is still pretty well pushed down there, although on the high side of the hill they are clearing out and putting in new homes. One little station here is called the Golf Club, uh, kind of an interesting uh, thing. Uh, I didn't know for years why they called it golf club, but in about 1910, the uh, members of the Vancouver Golf Club on Austin Road asked the BC Electric to put the station in, and they used to have a horse and a wagon would come and pick the golfers up from golf club station and take them up uh, with the horses and wagon up to the Vancouver Golf Club on 
uh, Austin Road. Uh, later, in, in, later on, a few years later, they had an old McLaughlin Buick that used to haul them on. Now we can see the car barns at Saperton, around the bend, and that's the end of the line, which at one time the line went right into, right along Columbia Street in front of the penitentiary, right down Columbia, down through town to the depot at 8th Street and Columbia. But when they put the buses in in 1937, this is the end of the line. The conductor will go in that little booth and phone the dispatcher and get clearance to head back to Vancouver. And in a moment, you'll see the motorman get out there out the back door and change the trolley pole. There he is, 